Welcome to Messiah Lutheran Church in Lakeville, Minnesota. So glad you're able to make it and be with us today as we worship. Uh, today we're continuing our Back to the Basics series, and we are going to be looking at uh, Luke 18. And we're going to be looking at the Pharisee and the tax collector in, in, in the temple, and one of them proclaiming how good he is and how awesome he is and thanking God that he's not like that other schmo. And then you have the tax collector who realizes his sin, realizes his mistakes, and grabs hold of God's grace and won't let go. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today is what are you holding on to? Um, we also have a couple announcements real quick. Uh, first off, uh, we're going to have a voters meeting on the 22nd. That'll be for our budget. Um, and then you'll be getting more information about that here very soon. And then also we have our old-fashioned Christmas going to be coming up. Uh, that's going to be here on campus. We're going to be outside. We're going to have fire pits and we're going to have uh, carols and sled rides and all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, we're just going to have a grand old time together. Uh, if you'd like to sign up for that, because we kind of, because of COVID, need to keep the numbers down to less than 250, uh, we'd love for you to sign up. You can sign up on our website, on our Facebook page, or also you can uh, find it on Realm. So with that, why don't we begin with an opening prayer? Heavenly Father, in this world, there are many things Satan would love us to grab hold of and, and hold on tight to, to look for, for our salvation, for our peace, and for our hope. But Lord, only one of them actually gets us where we need to be. Only one of them brings salvation. Only one of them brings forgiveness. Only one of them brings eternal peace. And that is when we grab hold of your son and hold tight. So Lord, in a time that is all sorts of turmoil going on, we ask, Lord, that we would hold tight to your son and look to him in all our troubles and in all our worries. We ask this in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. i 
Today we continue uh, worshiping the Lord by confessing our faith, proclaiming what God has done for this world in creating us and what he has done for us in saving us and what he continues to do every day in our lives through his Holy Spirit. And the way we're going to do that confession today is we're going to use the words of the Apostles' Creed. So I'd like to invite you to say these words with me. I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We're now going to continue our service with our gospel lesson. And our gospel lesson is what our sermon is based on for today, and it's from Luke 18, starting at the 19th, or the ninth verse. To some who were confident in their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers and evildoers and adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector, he stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O oh Christ. In our second epistle for today, our second lesson for today, comes from Romans 3, starting at the 19th verse. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of our sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known to the law which the, made known to which the law and the prophets testify. The righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew or Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue now with our offering. Um, Our offering can be given in all sorts of different ways. Uh, It can be given in person here in the offering plates that are outside the doors. Uh, It can be mailed into the congregation. It can also be done online on our website or on Realm. Uh, You can even text it in as the the screen is going to show here. Those offerings that you give are used by the Lord to do his ministry here in Lakeville, but also it goes out into the world. It goes out into Minnesota, uh, and it goes out into the United States, and then goes overseas to all sorts of areas so that the, the gospel can be proclaimed. Questions answer. You are every reason why. You are moving. You are still, Lord. You are. You are the Lord on high. You are the way, the truth, the life. You are the Word made flesh. You are the prize. Warning 
Grace and peace in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our sermon today is going to be based on one of the readings that was just read, the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. Um, but before we get into that, I have a little story. It, it comes to us from 1987, all them many years ago. There was a, a pilot by the name of Henry Dempsey. Now, Henry was doing a uh, just a, a regular commuter flight back and forth between Portland, Maine, and then Boston. And he did this flight all the time, and one day he and his co-pilot took off, and, and they were going, and suddenly they started to hear a really weird noise from the back. And so they, you know, continued on. The noise just didn't stop. And so uh, uh, Dempsey got up, and he told the co-pilot, you take over, I'm going to go take a look and see what's going on. So he went past all the people, and he went to the very back of the plane. And this is one of those uh, older planes that had the exit in the back and all those kind of things. And so he got back there, and right when he got back, and he was inspecting the door and everything else to see what was going on, the plane hit this big air pocket and lurched. Well, he was standing, and so that just sent him flying into that back door, to which he then discovered what was making the sound. The back door wasn't closed properly. And when he hit that door, it basically flung open, and he got sucked right out. Well, as soon as that happened, the co-pilot had his light flashing, showing that there was a door open, and people were shouting that the pilot had gotten sucked out the back. And so he right away called uh, the, the closest airport and said he needed to do an emergency landing. And he dropped his, his, his altitude to about 4,000 4, yeah, 4, feet, and he slowed down to about 200 miles an hour. And finally, he was able to land. When they landed, they were amazed. They were amazed because Henry Dempsey was still there. As he had gotten sucked out, somehow he was able to grab hold of the railing on that back door, and he held on with, for just dear life. It actually took the, the ground crew about 10 minutes to just slowly peel that hand open so they could get him off of that door. It's my belief that uh, Henry Dempsey's grip is just slightly less than that of the tax collector of our parable today. Because our tax collector is holding on tight, but he's holding on to God's grace. 
Henry Dempsey knew that that ladder was the only thing that was going to save him, that he needed to hold on to that for dear life. And what's interesting is so does our tax collector, not to adore, but to God's grace. Because he sees his sin, he sees that he has no hope except for God's mercy and God's love. And so he grabs hold of it and he refuses to let go. Unfortunately, though, there's a lot of people that are unlike the pilot and unlike that tax collector are holding on to things, but they're holding on to the wrong stuff. There are a lot of people who are holding on to things that they believe are going to help keep them from failure and frustration and damnation, but they're not going to. For instance, the, 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 the Pharisee in Jesus' parable is a wonderful example of this. The Pharisee is, well, believes in his own goodness. And to be honest, he probably is better than the tax collector. I think it would be hard to argue that he isn't. Um, he probably gives about 10% of everything he has to the Lord. He um, tries to behave himself. He doesn't get into trouble. He uh, knows the scriptures like the back of his hand. He's a, a pillar of the community. He has the respect of pretty much everybody that he run in, runs into. But as good as he is, well, like all human beings, he falls short of God's perfection. He had the wrong idea. He believed that in the, in the end, God was going to look at him and go, well, you know what? You tried. It, it, you did the best you could, and that, that's really all I could ask. Come on in. And he's going to find out that that was wrong. But he's not the only one. Because, I mean, yeah, Jesus, he, when he's telling this parable, he singles out these two people, the tax collector and the Pharisee. But he didn't have to just single out those two. He probably could have pretty much pointed a finger in, in just about any direction, and he would have found people that were holding on to the wrong thing. Jesus might have singled out the person who was holding on to the idea that, well, he could live his life without the Lord. And then at the last moment, just suddenly, you know, switch teams and everything would be okay. Jesus could have pointed to the in individual that was just holding on to the, the pleasures of this life. Holding on to the here and now and ignoring the fact that eventually there's going to be judgment. Might have looked to the newlyweds who thought their love would be the source of eternal happiness. Or the parents who thought their newborn was going to bring them the hope that they wanted. All sorts of people around Jesus he could have pointed to, people that were looking for their hope in the wrong place. He could have even probably pointed at, at Pontius Pilate and looking at him holding on to his government and holding on to his own power. Jesus could have pointed at any of these people who were holding on to their delusions and knowing that it was going to fail them. And to be honest, if Jesus had shown up in our streets, he'd be able to say the same thing. He could point to those people who have looked at science and, and basically allowed it to replace God. Now, science is great. It is a gift from God. To be honest, I'm alive today because of the doctors and nurses that have helped me and been with me. And many of you could say the exact same thing, that God has used science and given it to us as a gift. But the problem is, when science becomes God, that's where the problem comes in. You, I mean, if you've seen the uh, you know, political ads lately or many of the uh, TV shows, science gets talked about in the same way and in the same manner that we would talk about God. Science knows all. Science does all. Science will save all. People are holding on to the wrong stuff. Some hold on to political parties. My political party, as long as it can get power or stay in power, will, well, help us all and make everything right. Some hold on to sports. It's the sports they play, or it's the sports their kids play, or it's the sports they watch. Now, I don't think anybody that does that would say, well, I'm holding on to those things to, to save my soul but it does consume every part of their lives, and it is where they look to for their greatest hope and their greatest good. And there's many more. In Jesus' day and ours, we're often like 
the Pharisee and holding on to the wrong thing for our salvation, for our hope, for our forgiveness, and for our peace. We all do it in big and small ways. I even did it this week, and I'm ashamed to admit it, but I started grabbing hold of the wrong thing this week. It was Tuesday, um, and today's only Wednesday, so we still don't know who has won the election. But uh, when, and So on Tuesday, Jody and I went and we voted. And after we got done voting, I, I looked at her and I said, well, we've done our bit. We just kind of have to put it in God's hands now and let it be. And so then we went to dinner, and I told her, you know, I'm not even going to bother looking at my phone or anywhere else to see how the election's going. I, I just don't care. I'm not worried about it. But we went to uh, Granite City for tacos, and uh, we're sitting there, and every single TV in the whole place is giving election results. And I couldn't help but look up at it. And by the time dinner is done, I'm done with my food, and Jody's still finishing up hers, so I just you know, took a quick look at my phone to see how the election thing was going. And by the time we left, I was obsessed. I had to know what was going on in what state and what the percentages were and everything else. Now, if you care about the election and you were following that, that's not necessarily bad. What became bad is when I just couldn't think of anything else and I was so obsessed with it and I was so worried about it. It just consumed me. I stayed up till 2 a.m. that night and then when I slept, I barely slept because I kept on getting up to look at my phone again and just check and see how things are going now. I had to look. I had to know. Because, well, would my candidate win? They better because the world's going to end if they don't. I just kept on worrying and obsessing and just becoming consumed by it all. In the morning, Jody laughed as I'm trying to make breakfast and I look like a zombie because I have just got no sleep and I have been stressed out all night long. I told her about the evening and why I looked the way I did and she just laughed at me and just shook her head and she said, um, maybe you should practice what you preach. Yeah, she was right. I was being the Pharisee in Jesus' parable. I was holding on to the wrong thing. Is my candidate going to save the world? If my candidate loses, is the world going to end? No. If I have truly asked the Lord to do his work, and I do believe, and I believe that he is the all-powerful creator of things that still works in my life and the life, lives of the, everyone in this world, I needed to put it in his hands. He can do his work no matter what, and I need to sit back and let him do so. When he destroyed, you know, just think about it, it's what he does. When we destroyed God's purple, perfect world, he didn't tell, leave it up to us to fix it. He created a plan, a plan of salvation that he put in place. God worked through all of history using good people and bad people, people that believed in him and people that didn't believe in him to bring about his son's birth in a Bethlehem stable. He used conniving and corrupt religious leaders and priests to make sure that his son was brought up on, tri on trial. He used a spineless governor to make sure that his son was nailed to a cross so that when he said, it is, is finished. It really was. As, and he used death, the greatest of all evils in the world, to defeat death. Through our history and throughout our history, God has worked to bring about his plan of salvation. Even when what is happening in this world looks like it is anything but God's plan. And the more I thought about that, the more I had to admit, as much as I hate to say this, especially on camera, Jody was right. I sat down in my car and I bowed my head. And I said a prayer. 
He said, Lord, I've been holding on to politicians and policies and my own strength to save me and our nation. He said, Lord, let me hold on to you. You saved this world by using messed up sinners throughout all of history. Help me to trust that you are at work and that you are continuing to work. Help me to hold on you no matter what the outcome, knowing that you are with me and that you are working. And I said, amen. And it was interesting that when I, like the tax collector, finally grabbed hold of the Lord, grabbed hold of my trust in him, suddenly my shoulders that had been like this for over 72 hours <sighs> relaxed. My jaw, which had been clenched, and I didn't even realize it had been clenched. It was kind of one of those things. I got done with this prayer, and I was like, oh, oh, that's sore. Ah. And I had to realize how much stress I had just been building up in my body because I was putting all my hope and trust in some place that ultimately wasn't going to bring what I really needed. A smile came to my face for the first time in way too long. Now, I don't know if your candidate won or lost. I do, don't know if you think a savior has been elected or a Satan. But I do know this. Don't hold on to them. Hold on to the risen and living Savior because he is the one who is in control. He can work through any and every situation. If he can work to save the world by using Mad King Herod and conniving Pontius Pilate. There is nothing that he can't do. Let's hold tight to our Savior in this storm and literally just put everything into his hands. Our worry, our fears, our concerns, all of it. And let it melt away. Our vote may have been right or it may have been wrong, but Christ is still reigning and he is still at work. Let's ask him to bless our nation. Let us ask him to heal our divisions. Let's be like that tax collector and hold tight to the Savior. Hold tight to him who is the Lord of everything, including America. Amen. Having heard the word of God, let us confess our sins to God our Father. Heavenly Father, as we have heard in our gospel lesson today, we heard about a tax collector that didn't look to his own righteousnesses or his own abilities, but looked to you and your grace alone. Lord, all too often we follow the path of that Pharisee. We trust in political parties, we trust in, in science, or we trust in uh, our friendships or our loved ones, or we, we look on every place imaginable but to you, to where we need to look the most. So Lord, let us take all those things that I mentioned as blessings. We thank you for our government. We thank you for our families. We thank you for science. We thank you for all those blessings, but help us not look to them for our greatest good. Let us hold on to you. And Lord, we ask you to forgive us for all the times we have looked to them and held on to them. Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit would keep us focused on you and your Son. We also ask, Lord, that you would forgive us for all the times that we have not loved you with our heart, soul, and mind and also all the times that we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We take a few moments of silent personal confession and lift up our sins to you. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his only son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. That is why as a called and ordained servant of the word, I announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior, I proclaim that you are forgiven in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
now continue our service with our prayers and uh, just so you know at the recording of this we still don't know who uh, has won the election and so we'll just be praying for the election and for our president and hopefully by the time that you see this you will know who it is so Heavenly Father we thank you this day that we know that we can hold on to you with all our heart soul and mind and that you will never abandon us we pray that each one of us would see the example of the tax collector, not hoping and trusting in his own good works or in his own merits, but looking only to your son. We pray, Lord, that we would do the same, not looking to politicians and not looking in all other directions, but looking solely to him and trusting in him, putting all our fears, our concerns, and everything we are worried about into his hands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask that you would be with our election as things are still being counted. We ask, Lord, that you would be with whoever is elected. And, Lord, we ask that you would bless them and that you would give them wisdom to lead our nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also pray, Lord, that you would heal our nation. There are many, there are many problems that we are dealing with, many hurts, many pains. So, Lord, we ask that you would bring, he bring healing to us, that you would remove division, and that you would bring unity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we also pray for all those who are sick. We ask that you be with Don Meeks and Steve Rawl and Diane Stachowicz. We ask that you would be with them and all those that are struggling with their health. We ask that you would heal them according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we also lift up Linda Thompson at the loss of her mother, Martha. Lord, we ask that you would be with Linda and the whole family as they mourn. And we ask that you would constantly remind them that they do not mourn as those that have no hope, but those who have the hope that Martha is with you and that one day they will be reunited. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Lord, we pray for our mission-focused project video. We thank you, Lord, for all the work that they do. We thank you for the fact that they bring your gospel and your love and your care to them in a video format, but in a language that they can understand, in a language that is spoken in their heart and in their mind. 
And we ask, Lord, that through your Holy Spirit, you would work through Project Video and bring more and more people to your saving grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace, this is unfailing love, that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you laid down your life, that I would be set free, Jesus I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King of glory. Who rules the nations with truth and justice? Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance, the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace, this is unfailing love, that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you laid down your sing for all that you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You laid down your life. That I would be set free. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.